Previously, I have discussed how grids are represented in the MRST. In this video, I will go through the basic routines for generating structure grids, and I will show you a few examples of how you can write your own scripts to adapt these grids for specific purposes. The simplest example of a structured grid consists of unit squares in 2D, so that all the vertices in the grid are integer points. To construct such a grid in MRST, I use the function cutGrid, which produces a grid structure tree with fields representing cells, faces and vertices. This grid is a special case of, of rectilinear grids, and what cut grid does is simply calling the more generic tensor grid function with the appropriate parameters. This can be seen from the type field of the grid structure. A rectilinear grid consists of rectangular cells that are not necessarily congruent to each other. Let us make one such grid that is graded towards the middle in the x direction and towards the top in the y direction. The only geometric information present in the grid structure is the coordinates of the vertices. To compute and add more geometric information, I call the function compute geometry. This adds cell centroids and volumes to the grid structure. And for the faces, we get areas, centroids and normals. So let's plot the cell volumes to clearly show the graded nature of the grid. To represent more complex domains than simple box geometries generated by cut grid and tensor grid functions, we can use the fictitious domain method. In this method, the domain of interest is embedded in a larger domain of simple shape, using a mapping that describes where the grid cells are inside or outside of the domain. To illustrate this, let us remove a half circle from the lower part of the domain. First, I use the coordinates of the grids to compute a map that is false inside the circle and true outside. Then I use the function extract subgrid to cut away the unwanted pieces of the box geometry. Let's assume now that we want to include permeability or porosity in this model. MRST has relatively simple support for geostatistics and only contains routines that generate log normally distributed random permeabilities on the rectangular boxes. So how do we get such values put onto our grid which is no longer rectangular? To this end we can use a functionality in what is called the cell index map. So we generate a log normal field and then use cell index map to sample the values in the actual physical domain from the surrounding fictitious box. As a last example, I will show you how to randomly perturb the inner points of the grid model. To this end, I use a two-step algorithm. First, I create a map that identifies all faces that are part of the external boundary. Second, I create a, a new map in which I mark all nodes that belong to the boundary faces as false and all other nodes as true. Then I use this logical index map to loop through all interior cells and use MATLAB's built-in function RANDN multiplied by a magical 007 factor to randomly perturb the nodes. I do not expect that you understood all the details of my small implementation, but I thought it was a good opportunity to give you a glimpse of how we use logical indexing and indirection maps rather than traditional for loops to efficiently loop through unstructured grids. After seeing this video, I hope that you have learned some tricks on how you can use simple routines in the MRST and modify their output to generate your own grids. I recommend that you spend some time experimenting with the software before you return to the rest of the videos in this jolt that will discuss more advanced gridding features.